Hi everyone, welcome back to CRIM 2080 Introduction to Forensic Science. This is our second video for our firearms lecture. And in this video, we're gonna go into the different types of firearms, as well as the different components and parts of a firearm. So with that, I'm gonna share the screen and we can get started. So a firearm is defined as a device or instrument that has a firing assembly and a barrel, which is capable of firing a projectile under the properties of combustion. So let's break this down a little bit. So a firing assembly is also known as an action. And this is the mechanism which initiates your cycle of fire. It's what starts the firing process. So an example of this could be a, a hammer. So you may have heard the term cock the hammer, cocking the hammer. That's what this is referring to. It's this action or mechanism that is going to initiate a cycle of fire. Then we have this word combustion. So combustion is a chemical reaction between oxygen and a fuel source, in this case, uh, some sort of gunpowder. And what happens here is uh, when this reaction occurs, you get a, a production of highly pressurized gases. And these gases are going to be what is uh, firing your projectile, essentially. Then lastly, we have a barrel. So the barrel is required in order to contain these gases. It's going to uh, control and contain where our gases are going. It's going to make sure our gases travel in one direction. And that helps us make sure our projectile or bullet only travels in the one direction we want it to. If we don't have this vessel, uh, the barrel to contain our pressurized gases that are a result of this combustion reaction, what we essentially have is an explosion. It's going to be the rapid spread of highly pressurized gases in all directions. And that's what's going to differentiate then an explosion from uh, using a firearm. So there are two types of firearms that we're gonna discuss, handguns and long guns. Handguns are held or fired with uh, a single hand or more often they can be fired using a single hand. Uh, they can also be fired with two. So these are your revolver and pistols. Then you have long guns. These are held or fired while resting on your shoulder. So these are your rifles and shotguns. So a revolver, the key feature in a revolver is this rotating cylinder of chambers. So this is where your uh, cartridges are stored until they're ready to be fired in these chambers. So the important thing to note about these revolvers is that when it's fired, your cartridge gases have to be manually ejected. And you can see how that can be important for us if they don't uh, stay after they fire it in the commission of a crime, if they don't uh, eject their cartridge cases, those aren't available to us as evidence now. They're going to remain with the user who has the gun. Moving on to pistols. Pistols are handguns that have uh, the chamber and barrel as one integrated part. So with the revolvers, right, the chamber, the rotating cylinder is separate from your barrel. In a pistol, they're one integrated unit. The way you load these instead is you use a removable magazine. So what you can do is you can push a button, the magazine will pop out. You can load uh, your ammunition components, your cartridges into the magazine push it back in and it's ready to use. So with the pistols, your cartridge case is going to be automatically ejected, which is good for us. It's going to leave this evidence behind unless the uh, shooter goes around and picks all of them up. So it makes it a little more work for them. Uh, the reason, uh, so I have this labeled semi-automatic pistols. So what makes it semi-automatic is meaning uh, one trigger pull is going to fire one shot. So it's automatic in the sense that the trigger pull is going to initiate the cycle of fire on its own. You don't have to manually go in and cock the hammer before pulling the trigger. 
pulling the trigger is going to do that for you. This is opposed to just an automatic pistol or a submachine gun or an automatic rifle where when you hold down the trigger, it's going to fire for as long as possible until you either release the trigger or you run out of ammunition. Moving on to rifles, these can be single shot, semi-automatic or automatic. Single shot means that you can only chamber and fire one round at a time. And each time you uh, fire a round, you have to manually reload it. Uh, in addition, pistols and uh, could also be uh, single shot. So the important thing about rifles is that they contain uh, inside their barrel these lands and grooves, which we call rifling. And we're going to go into this a little later. Pistols and revolvers can also have rifling. And these rifling characteristics can then be imprinted onto a bullet and will allow us to be able to compare uh, our ammunition components that we collect from a crime scene to uh, test fired bullets. And we can then tie them back to a source or a specific gun that was used. Lastly, we have shotguns. So these again can be single shot, semi-automatic or automatic. And the important difference here is that the barrel is not rifled. It has what we call a smooth bore. Uh, also, the ammunition is a little bit different in a shotgun. So the shells uh, contain these uh, balls, metal balls that are called um, a shot. So basically what happens is when you fire it, the shot is fired, the shot spreads, and you have a bunch of little uh, dots when it hits a target that are caused by these metal uh, balls or pellets. Moving on to the parts of a firearm. So as you can see, there are a lot of different uh, components to a firearm. We're gonna talk about only three of them, the barrel, the chamber, and the trigger. So the barrel of the firearm is the part of the firearm through which a projectile or shot charge travels down. So that's this long part where your bullet travels. When we are manufacturing firearms, what happens is essentially your barrel starts off as this uh, solid metal chunk. It's this solid metal cylinder that needs to be hollowed out and they do this by drilling it. And during this drilling process, marks are going to be left on the inner surface of the barrel. And that's really what is going to help us in, this, uh, in our comparisons. These markings that are left through the drilling process are going to be random. They're going to be irregular in a way that's going to impart uniqueness, unique marks to each barrel. And that's what allows us to tie back a specific uh, bullet that we collect to a specific gun. The bore is part of the barrel, so it's the interior of the barrel that is in front of the chamber. So this can be smooth uh, with shotguns, so it has a smooth bore, or it can be rifled in the case of uh, handguns or the rifles. And again, rifling is these lands and grooves inside of your barrel or your bore. So again, with the exception of shotguns, our bore is going to be rifled. Rifling is these grooves in a bore of a firearm barrel that's going to impart a spin to the bullet, which helps to stabilize it while it's in flight. So think of it as throwing a football, right? Remember, so when a quarterback throws the football, it's going to have this spin that helps stabilize and make sure that their pass is accurate and goes where they want it to go. When an inexperienced uh, individual throws a football, it's going to be all wonky when it uh, goes through the air. And it's going to probably, A, not as travel as far, and B, probably not get to where they were aiming for, right? So the same thing applies here to the bullets with rifling. It's going to have this gyroscopic spin, which helps stabilize it in its flight path. So when we impart rifling or when rifling is parted to a, a barrel of a firearm, they add these grooves and it creates grooves and lands. So when our bullet is fired, it's going to interact with our lands and then have this spin to it. 
So moving on to caliber, the caliber then is the distance from land to land. So we can measure this by uh, when we collect a bullet or if we collect a gun, we can measure the caliber of the firearm or ammunition component. Shotguns are, uh, their barrels are measured as a gauge. So that's just gonna be the diameter of the bore. So it's important to remember with, uh, with the rifling when it comes to firearms analysis and comparison is that your projectile is only gonna interact with those lands. These lands here, when your bullet is fired, it's not gonna come into contact with the grooves, right? Because these are lower your bullet's not going to be able to reach those areas within the bore. It's only going to touch and come into contact with the lands when it's fired. And that's where we're gonna see these striations that we're going to be able to compare in order to tie back certain ammunition components collected at a crime scene, certain bullets to a specific gun. The chamber, this is the rear end of your firearm. This is where your, um, your cartridges are stored until they're ready to be fired. Uh, and there's no rifling in this section. Lastly, the trigger, this is that lever that you pull in order to start the firing process and initiate this cycle of fire. So with that, our lecture is complete and we're going to have another video on firearms uh, in the next one. So I'll see you then.